Okay, let's chop it up real quick. So the first question, 3.1, we want to calculate the length of SL and leave our answer in set form. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So SL will be equals to the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. Uh, the basics really nothing complicated i don't think we should be getting these kind of questions wrong so we have sl let's take l as our first point and s as our second point so y2 will be the y value of s which happens to be 5 minus the y value of l which is 1 so we have 5 minus 1 squared plus x value of s uh, that is 4 minus the x value of l which is minus 4 so 4 minus 4 is plus so we have plus 4 squared okay the answer here is 4 square root of 5 okay uh, we shouldn't be getting that wrong we shouldn't be getting that wrong let's go ahead and do 3.2 3.2 we're looking for the gradient of sn okay uh, so this is s and this is n we have said that s is our second point so let's take uh, n as our first point and see what we get so the gradient gradient that is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 right the y value of s is 5 minus the y value of n which is minus 3 so 5 minus minus 3 that is just plus 3 okay divided by the x value of s which is 4 minus minus 2 so that is 4 plus 2 so we have 8 divided by 6 which will be 4 divided by 3 okay i think that is the answer we are supposed to get um i don't know if i trust that answer or not so let me do it the other way around and see if i get to the same conclusion so minus 3 minus 5 divided by minus 2 minus 4 minus 8 divided by minus 6 okay uh, i think i think we're good to go uh, that is 3.2 we are really sticking to the basics. Uh, we haven't solved any question that is complicated up to so far. So we should have those marks in the bag. 3.3, calculate the size of theta, the angle of inclination of Sn. Okay, we know fully well that tan of theta should be equal to the gradient of that line. So theta will be equal to tan inverse of the gradient which happens to be 4 divided by 3, okay? Let me just pull that in my calculator again so that I don't make any silly mistake. That is 53.13 degrees, okay? So how many marks? 2, 2, 2, 6. So we have 6 marks in the bag. We haven't done anything complicated. It's just standard procedure. Let's take a look at 3.4. 3.4, we're interested on the size of angle L and S. Let's go ahead and denote that we have this angle L and S, okay? How can we possibly find that angle? Well, in the question above, I was calculating theta. So let me see if I can use theta to get to angle alpha, of which is L and S in our case, okay? So, because of vertical opposite angle, this angle right here should be equal to theta, okay? Uh, so, this angle is 53.13, okay? So, how, how do I move after being able to realize that? I can find the inclination of LN. Look at the inclination of LN, this angle here, right? The inclination of LN... Uh, let's call it this symbol. The inclination of ln should be equals to theta plus alpha. Okay. Why do I say that? This is an exterior angle of triangle KON. Well, not KON, but this point here. I don't know. This point doesn't have a name, but that is the point we're interested in. So that angle uh, should be equals to theta plus alpha. So let's go ahead and find the inclination of ln. So we have to find the gradient of ln first if we want to find the inclination of ln. 
in finding the gradient of ln we're gonna have y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay let's take l as our second point and n as our first point so y is 1 minus y of n which is minus 3 okay divided by x which is minus 4 minus x of n which is minus 2 so 1 minus minus 3 that is 4 minus 4 minus minus 2 that is minus 2 so the gradient of ln is minus 2 okay so now i have to go ahead and find angle the inclination of ln okay so the inclination of ln will be equals to tan inverse the gradient of ln which is minus 2. if the gradient is negative you're going to find a negative angle and when that is the case we have to add 180 degrees okay so let me just put that in my calculator and see what i have so tan inverse of minus 2 is minus 63.43 I add 180, I get 116.57, okay? So the size of this angle is 116.57. What does that tell us? Let's not forget what we are proposing. Let's not forget what we're proposing. That tells us that 116.57 is equal to theta which is 53.13 plus alpha okay so our angle alpha or lkn ln as not lkn I'm, I'm sorry for that our angle alpha will be 116.57 minus 53.13 okay so let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator real quick and see what i get I get 63.44 degrees. So yeah, that is the size of angle LNS. LNS. Why am I seeing LKN? LNS. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the gradient of LN. And then I find the angle of inclination, 116. Um, I'm looking for the angle of LNS. Okay. Yeah, we are... Uh, we are good to go. That is the size of LNS. Yeah, let me know in the comment if you found a different answer. You'll probably not find a different answer, but use a different method. Uh, I'm quite convinced that uh, the approach I'm taking is the right one. Uh, that is 3.4. 3.5. 3.5. Determine the equation of the line which passes through L and is parallel to SN. So the line is passing through L. Let me just erase all this for the sake of clarity. Okay. Uh, the line is passing through L and it is parallel SN. Do I have the gradient of SN? Yes. I calculated the gradient of SN in 3.2. So let me just go ahead and take a look. Uh, it was 4 divided by 3. So that tells me that uh, the line of which I'm interested in will have a gradient of 4 divided by 3, x plus c. Okay? Parallel lines have the same gradient. Okay? So now I just have to find the value of c. But I'm given the point L. They say that the line goes through the point L. So I have coordinates minus 4 and 1, which I can substitute into this equation to find c. If I go ahead and do that, uh, the y value is 1. The x value is minus 4 plus c. So c is equal to 1 plus 4 divided by 3 multiplied by 4. Okay, let me just check uh, which answer I am getting. I have 19 divided by 3. Does it make sense? 4 multiplied by 4, 16 plus 3, 19 divided by 3. Okay, I think we're good to go. So y is equal to 4 divided by 3, x plus c. <laughs> Why am I saying c? x plus 19 divided by 3. c is 19 divided by 3. Uh, if I substitute minus 4, will I get 1? If I substitute minus 4. Uh, that is the equation. Let me see if that will be the case. 
uh, if that will be the case minus 4 plus 19 divided by 3 1 okay i'm getting 1 when i substitute minus 4 so i'm quite convinced that i have the correct equation okay you can still get the corresponding y value and your equation be wrong that is very possible but anyway let's carry on stories um i just did 3.5 so now we have to go to 3.6 3.6 3.6 we want to find the area of lsn the area of lsn okay let me see how i can do that the area of triangle lsn so we have l s n i calculated the length of sl in 3.1 so i have sl sl is equal to 4 square root of 5 so this is 4 square root of 5 okay um here i have an angle of 90 degrees so if i find the length of ln i can easily find the area of triangle lsn because i'll just use half base multiplied by height okay so let me go ahead and use that idea so sl i've already calculated it above we have four square root of five now i just need to calculate uh, the length of line ln so ln will be the square root of x2 minus x1 so if i take s as our ln not <laughs> ls okay if i take l as our second point and n as our first point i'm gonna have minus four minus minus two so minus four plus two squared plus one minus minus three so one plus three squared okay let me put that in my calculator again just to make sure that i'm not making any any silly mistake yeah I, I always hate it when the concept is right and i just make a silly mistake okay so i have ln this is 2 square root of 5 and the sandwich these two lines the sandwich an angle of 90 degrees so i can just say that uh, the area of triangle what are they calling it lsn is equals to half sl multiplied by ln sine of 90 degrees sine of 90 degrees sine of 90 degrees is one that is why when the angle is 90 we just see a half breath multiplied by height anyway stories this will be equals to f sl is four 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 square root of five multiplied by two square root of five sine of 90 which is one so i just need to put that in my calculator so f multiplied by 4 square root of 5 multiplied by 2 square root of 5 multiplied by sine of 90. I know sine of 90 is 1, so let me just leave that. Okay, I'm getting 20. Uh, do we have a unit? Uh, I don't think we're given any units, so I'm just going to say 20 uh, units squared. Some people will say 20 square units. I think yeah that will also be fine so that is the area of lsn okay uh, you could have used a different method maybe use ln and ls yeah i think you should still get to uh, quite a good answer yeah you should get to the correct answer either way and then 3.7 3.7 calculate the coordinates of p which is equidistant from l s and n i must say i spent more time on this question than any other okay <laughs> right yeah because it is not a concept uh, that is usually examined okay so we want the you want to find the coordinates of p which is equidistance from l s and n so what does that mean that means that l p should be equals to n p it should be equals to s p this is what it means okay so in order to find the coordinates of that point p which will make this requirement to be true 
we need the point P to be the midpoint of NS. Okay, that is when we have a right angle, the triangle. The midpoint of the hypotenuse will be equidistant from the three other points. What the question is really testing here is this concept. Do you know this concept or not? It is not difficult to compute. It is not that demanding when it comes to the algebra side of it. Okay, so the midpoint, the x value of the midpoint of our hypotenuse will be x of s plus x of n divided by 2. So we're going to have 4 plus minus 2 divided by 2. 4 plus minus 2, that is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then the midpoint will be y of s plus y of n divided by 2, okay? So what is y of s? We have 5 minus 3 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the coordinates of P uh, that will make this requirement to be true, uh, such that LP is equal to NP is equal to SP, is 1 and 1. Okay, if you go ahead and calculate LP, NP, and SP, you will indeed find that they're equal when P has coordinates 1 and 1. That is 3.7. On the other end, 3.8, calculate the size of L. P S. I'm going to leave that one for you. Please let me know in the comment what answer did you get for 3.7. Okay. And also, one last thing, which question do you want me to do next? Let me know in the comments. I'm always reading the comment section, waiting for you guys to tell me which question I should do next.